In this part 7 of Quick Pre-Calculus Review for Calculus, we finally get to discussing exponential functions in part 7 of our unit on comparing, comparing and contrasting linear and exponential functions. We've only done linear functions so far. So in particular, we're going to focus on fitting an exponential function to data. In fact, when we've got two data points, one of which is the initial value at time equals 0, if time is the independent variable, and we also have one other point. Those are two known points uh, for the function that we have. We want to fit that with an exponential function. Our two situations are thinking about the population of Austin, Texas as a function of time, where t equals 0 stands for the year 2010, and also thinking about the depreciation in value of a car. So the value of a car uh, with time equals 0 being 2013 is a function of time as well. I'm going to focus at the beginning of this video on the car example here because we're going to see it's a little bit simpler. The fact that I'm thinking about the price going from one year to the next, from 2013 to 2014, is going to make the calculations a little simpler for this function. Here was the solution that we got with the linear function. If we assumed v was a linear function of t, we got this equation, v was 24 minus 3t, where the value v is in thousands of dollars and t is time since the year 2013. And for the final answer, here it, here it is right here. When we assume the car value is a linear function of time is g of 5, 5 years old, is about $9,000. Is that reality? Does that really happen? It's hard to say, uh, but that would be an approximation for what we would get if we assumed a linear function. Here was a plot where you can see the value going down over time. Now we want to come up with a solution using an exponential function. Okay, So we're going to assume v is the value of the car, again in thousands of dollars, t is the age of the car in years since 2013. Now we're going to assume v is an exponential function of t. v going down means also that it will be called an exponential decay function of t. So I put decay in parentheses like this. All right, what does that mean? The formula for this function will be of the form, I'll call it g of t again, v equals g of t equals, here's a, an important point, the initial value, if you know the initial value, you can put it here first. I'm going to label it with a v sub 0, okay, so it's a subscript there, sometimes I'll say v naught for short v sub 0, that's the initial value, the 0 kind of means time 0. This is one quantity, it's representing the initial value, which was $24,000. When you've got that initial value of the function, that can go first. It's going to make sense here after I talk about the next piece. Instead of adding the slope times t like we do with a linear function, we're going to, add, we're going to multiply the initial value times some number to the t power. Sometimes people call the number b, Sometimes they call it the number a, it doesn't matter what you call it. I think I'll call it a b. b is sort of short for the word base. b is going to be the base of this exponential function. When you look at this expression here, again, v sub 0, v naught, is a fixed number. It is the initial value, in this case, $24,000. b is also a fixed number. Okay. If it's exponential decay, as this is, b is going to be less than 1. It's always going to be positive. You never really think about negative b's here. b will be positive. If it's exponential decay, we will see b is less than 1. If it's exponential growth, b will be bigger than 1. What about b equals 1? Well, that's not very interesting because you get 1 to the t power, which is always 1, which means you really have a linear function instead of an exponential function. So b is positive and not equal to 1. When it's less than 1, it's exponential decay, and when it's greater than 1, it's exponential growth. We can start typing in numbers here. Again, v naught, the initial value is $24,000. What is b? Okay, this step right here for this problem is what's a little bit easier in this one compared to the population growth one. Um, because we are thinking about knowing the value one year in the future, what we can do is we can say, okay, as a percentage, what is $21,000 as a percentage of $24,000? Ask yourself that, maybe get your calculator out, maybe you can, hopefully you could even do it without your calculator. What percent is 21 of 24? What percent is $21,000 of $24,000? As a fraction, it's 21 over 24, or 7 eighths. 
as a decimal, that would be 0 0.875. That is the value of B. I'm just telling you that, but you can think about why that makes sense. Think about that. What that's saying is that the value after one year, $21,000, is 87.5% of the value when it was new, $24,000. So, if you plug t equals 1 into this function, so that means one year has passed, you will get a 0 0.875 to the first power, which is 0 0.875, multiplied by 24, you're going to get 21. You're, multi you're finding 87.5% of 24. All right, and this does give you the right value also when t is 0. g of 0 is 24. When you plug in t equals 0 here, you get 0.875 to the 0 power, which is defined to be 1, and then 1 times 24 is 24. So that is our exponential decay function. It's indicating that the value of the function is 87.5% of the preceding year's value, or said another way, the value goes down by 12.5% every year. So that's our formula for the, the model when we have an exponential decay function. Now we want to answer the question. We're not going to focus on using Mathematica in this video. We want to answer the question. We want to approximate the value of the car when it is five years old. The linear model gave us a, an approximated value of $9,000. What will the exponential model give us? It'll give us g of 5, the value after five years, as 24 times... 0.875, I can type it here, 875 to the fifth power. Go ahead and get your calculator out and evaluate that. I guess I will use Mathematica to at least evaluate that. The answer is about 12.3 units would be $1,000. So that would be our final answer if we use an exponential model here. Higher than for a linear function where we got $9,000. Okay? I'm going to go up to the other example here in a second, but I would encourage you to pause the video and think about what's going on here. Maybe graph this function, compare it with the graph of the other one. We will come back to that in the next video. Um, but right now, for the rest of this video, I want to go ahead and answer this question in the context of the population growth. Austin, Texas, growing from 790,000 in 2010 to 885,000 in 2013. Estimate the population in the year 2020. With a linear function, we got an estimate of 1.107, or probably 1.1 million people is a better, it's better to round it to that number of decimal places. 1.1 million people was our approximation for the population of Austin, Texas in the year 2020. If you're watching this after the year 2020, you can check and see how accurate that was. Let's go ahead and now finish the video off by assuming we're using the, an exponential function for that situation. Do a little copying and pasting to save some time here. This is going to be an exponential growth function. The population is going to go up as a function of time. P is going to be the population of Austin. in thousands of people, and t is the years since 2010. Here we're going to assume p is an exponential growth function of t. It's still going to have a very similar kind of formula, and the initial number that you put out in front is still going to be the initial value, in this case the initial population, which we know was what, I forgot, uh, 790,000. So this would be a 790 here. Now the B, though, is going to be bigger than 1. But what will it be? This one's a little trickier because we're not looking one year into the future. We're looking three years into the future. We've got the population in the year 2013 instead of the year 2011. F of 3 is going to be 885,000. We know, we also know, f of 3 is 885. It's a little trickier, but not too bad. We can still solve for b based on this fact. That's going to imply 
885 equals 790 times, just plug in t equals 3. Divide both sides by 790 and fix any typos. b to the third will be 885 divided by 790. So b itself is going to be the cube root of 885 divided by 790, that fraction to the one-third power. All right, let's get an approximation to that in Mathematica. I put a decimal in there. That'll do a numerical approximation for me. There it is. You should check that with your calculator. It's about 1.03858. So P equals F of T. This is going to be an approximation, really, is 790 times 1.03858 to the t power. And then f of 10, your approximation for the population in the year 2010, will be 790 times 1.03858 to the 10th power. Percent sign in Mathematica refers to the preceding output, so I can just take that preceding output to the tenth power and then multiply by 790. Looks like we have an approximation of 1153,000 people, and that will be approximately 1.2 million people. So the exponential growth model is giving us a higher estimate. And I'll end this video there. I'd encourage you to think about what I just did here on your own.